I'd love to introduce Billy to the world. Billy and I have been friends now for a couple of years, and I'm actually lucky enough to be co-authors uh, with her of the book Tiger Tactics, which you see behind me. Billy, myself, Ryan McKean, uh, Billy Umansky, and Teresa DeGray got together uh, about two years ago and really sort of described our journey in building our law firms uh, and walked you through 10 different chapters of, of, of what it took for us to sort of get where we are. Uh, and getting to know Billy over the last couple of years with her family law practice uh, has been absolutely phenomenal. Uh, the way she handles things in her office has been a model for me and my practice. And she's going to talk to us today about your kept promise indicators, uh, because KPIs are so important for every law firm to have. So Billy, please share with us your great knowledge. Thanks, Jay. Um, good morning, and I just want to thank everyone for uh, their great presentations. I've learned a lot, and it's been a lot of fun. Um, so I was uh, kind of inspired by the topic, which I didn't pick, um, uh, to figure out, okay, well, what are we going to communicate today about um, what should our KPIs be now? now that the world has changed. And so I've put together just a little thing. So we're just gonna go through what that might mean. Um, I'm a family law attorney, and so I'm mostly talking about family law. Uh, can everybody see my screen? Okay, great, okay, great. Um, so the world is changing and the middle class is shrinking. So if right now you serve middle market, then you've got a little bit of a problem because middle market is gonna shrink and there's going to be a larger group of people who are available at low cost legal services. And there's going to be a, a growing also, this middle class is going to shrink and some people are moving up and many people are moving down. So figuring out who you want to serve will help you figure out what your key performance indicators are going to be. And so I know for my firm, we decided I don't, I've done that before. I've done the high volume thing before and I don't want to do that. We're going to make sure that our services are geared towards the higher um, income individuals and higher value. And that is going to impact what the key performance indicators are and what my expectations are for the team. So what has happened so far? Emergencies are increasing and urgency is increasing. And that is also affecting the way that we need to handle cases. Number one, our intake needs to be better than it's ever been. Um, we need to be more responsive than we've ever been. Um, number two, conversions of people who actually meet with us for consultations are higher because urgency is up. The people who are willing to pay for consultations with family law attorneys are ready to hire. But the anxiety is also really high. So there is a bit of buyer's remorse. There's always buyer's remorse, but it's more now than ever. So not only do, does intake have to be fast, we have to have lawyers available for consultations who know how to actively listen, um, who know how to get people hired via Zoom immediately, walk them through the process while we're on video, get the credit card while we're on video, make them a client immediately. And then whoever's the assigned attorney needs to follow up and start um, responding and working right away. Because what can sometimes happen is someone will hire you, think about it, be like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I'm going to have enough cash for this and back off. So you have to take the uncertainty out. You have to be the answer to their problem. Problem and move their case along faster than ever. Now for family law, there's a couple other things that are going on. Um, your wealthy clients are looking to get divorced more than they were before. And that's because their, their um, markets have dropped, meaning the total value of what they have to divide is lower. Incomes and business income has dropped, which means if you're a business owner and you're looking to get divorced, your uh, business value is down, so your buyout's going to be lower. The amount of spousal maintenance you might owe is going to be lower. The amount of child support that you might owe is going to be lower. So speaking to those types of clients is going to be hugely impactful. Also, relocations are going to be up. People have to move after recessions for jobs. So talking about relocations in your video marketing or um, in what people are facing is going to be also a great way for you to be relevant to clients. And then current modifications. If someone has lost um, a job, then they qualify for a current modification of spousal maintenance or support. And you can be available to do that. Here are the five new 
key performance indicators that I think are most important for you to pay attention to. Number one, average client spend. If my goal, if I'm, if I'm anticipating fewer total clients and I want my law firm not to be so middle market, but to really serve the higher income clients than how much money we're spending on each case, which is largely determined by how we practice and the cases, is one of the most important indicators. This is also going to be a good indicator of the quality of our legal services. The other thing that I really like to tie in together is average client spend versus average client case length. If a case length takes six months, it should cost X amount. If a case length takes 12 months, it better cost more. Otherwise, we're simply sitting on cases and not doing the work. So these are um, kind of related key performance indicators that I'm looking at across the firm and with regards to each and every attorney. Number two, cash flow and cash reserves. You should always be looking at cash flow, but right now, cash flow is more important than ever. So if you're losing money month over month, you want to know exactly why. Where is the, le- is the weakest link? For us, because we are a family law firm and we're, we're billing, I can look at the productivity and the efficiency of each and every employee. Every employee is billable, is, should be a profit center, except for one. I only have one employee who's a cost center. So when I'm looking at cash flow and when I'm looking at cash reserves, I really want to analyze who's making me money and who's losing me money. And are there ways that I can decrease my costs, but not in a short-term way, in a long-term way, are there costs that I have that are not going to make me money? I want to invest in things that will make me money long-term. I don't want to be short-sighted and just start slashing my expenses. I want to think very critically about where my money is going and whether or not it's making me an ROI. And then cash reserves. One of the reasons that we all should have gotten the PPP money is not really to float our law firms. Honestly, it should be to sit in our banks while we continue to operate a cash flow positive law firm. That's my goal. And so far, at least with family law, I know for certain it's possible because we are not losing money. We are making money. And in fact, with the family law firms that I've talked to across the country, if you are a a law firm that has a good reputation, you're getting more calls. People right now aren't looking to get the cheapest lawyer. They want trust. They want certainty. If you've spent time building that firm, people are coming to you. Number three, productivity. And productivity is different from average client spend, and it's different from cash flow. Productivity in my firm is how much money are we billing? How much legal work are we doing each day? This is even more important now that everybody's home, right? Supporting your people who now have to be productive under a completely different um, mechanism is a big deal. And it took us two to three weeks of really drilling in to each and every person to figure out what they needed to become productive. And then how do we measure that productivity? It's by how much money we are billing as a firm and as individuals each day. Now, one of the ways that we're doing that is I'm very, very open with my team and they know what our average number is each day that we must hit as a firm each day in order to meet our goals. And we post it in a Slack channel every single day what was the total dollars that we billed the day before? Are we on track? Are we not? What does that allow me to do? It allows me to see everything in advance. It's a key performance indicator that's a leading indicator of how much money we're going to make later. And it also allows me to to see who's struggling with productivity and who's killing it. And if somebody's struggling, then my job as a leader is to go find out why. What's going on? Do you not have enough work to do? Are you not sure what needs to be done in cases? Are you struggling with distractions? Are you struggling with mental health? Like I had one person who is sort of prone to anxiety and she needed a break. And like, it wasn't that she didn't know what to do. It wasn't that she didn't have enough work to do. It was that she like, she wasn't able to function really well. And my job as a leader was to tell her, you know what? Take time off. We got you. It's time. Like, take, take the week. Um, and she came back a week later and she's killing it. But one of the ways we do that is by just checking in early and often with 
those key performance indicators, like how much money are you billing each day, but also checking in on a very, very human level. How are you feeling today? And so one of the things that we've added to our weekly meeting is a rate yourself one to 10. How are you doing emotionally? How are you doing um, how are you feeling right now? And that's new. We hadn't done that before, but but by adding that one little quick check-in around on our weekly meeting, I'm able to get a quick gauge and we're all better to, able to communicate and support one another. Fourth key performance indicator, number of new clients that you're getting each month and all the related um, intake indicators. So really, our intake indicators, leads, consultations, and conversions, all really predicts what this number four key performance indicator is, number of new clients. Are you getting enough new clients in order to satisfy what your future work needs are for your team and, your, and how much money you need to be making for your firm? Um, and I can tell you for us, uh, last month, March was slow. April was not and May has not been slow. So if you really hit the gas, and if you really find where your people are, for us, we've had a lot of success finding new clients through doing simple email marketing and social media marketing, and putting out a whole lot of videos about what's going on with regards to family law, what's happening with the courthouse, where do you file documents. There is all this news that's just waiting to be distributed that is very um, relevant to your potential clients. Do I have to exchange my children? Should I put my kids on a plane? What if my um, what if the other parent is a essential worker and they're working in a hospital? Should I should I be um, uh, should I keep my children if their father won't refuses to social distance? You have an unlimited amount right now of quality relevant material that you can be putting out. So for us, that's what we've done, and the number four key performance indicator that we're talking about, number of new clients has gone up. And I think that those are all related. All right. And the last key performance indicator that I want to talk about is net promoter score. Net promoter score is customer satisfaction. It is a, it is a measurement of customer, customer satisfaction. And I have stepped this up in a couple ways. Number one, I am asking what we always did was we always asked every client at the end of every case for the score. Um, and when we got a good score, we always tied that to asking for a review because I want to systematically increase my reviews. And I wasn't getting as many as I wanted because I have more locations and every single location needs to be fed reviews. So I started also asking or having my team ask um, after a consultation for a net promoter score for customer feedback plus reviews. And then the third way I added it was we added a person um, calling our existing client base once a month to just check in and say, hey, I'm a new person at the firm. Um, I'm a new position. You can talk to me anytime you want to, and you're never, ever going to be billed. Is there anything I can do to better meet your needs? So those are the three ways that we are asking for customer feedback, that we're trying to make sure that, that we are taking care of our existing clients as we grow the rest of our firm. 